Good morning. Welcome to Live for Five with Pastor Ben. I'm glad you are with us today. Uh, man, I, I was actually struggling on Facebook. Facebook, I think, has changed something. The button for going live wasn't in the same spot. Um, either it's an update or maybe they're squeezing churches. I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to see. Uh, if that's the case, we'll figure something else out. I, I'm not too worried about it. But uh, I... I I'm pretty certain that Facebook doesn't really care all that much for churches and what church churchly messages they're bringing about. So, but anyway, good morning, Leroy. Good morning, Carol. I hope your party went well. It looks like you guys had a lot of people there. That was that looked like a fun time. Uh, such a neat gathering for your family. Let us make our beginning this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Amen. If you pull out the YouVersion Bible app, our verse of the day is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 11, verse 24. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it. And it will be yours. So, therefore, anytime you see a therefore, you need to see what the therefore is there for, right? This is a continued continuation of a pre-existing conversation. So we need to know what we're talking about. Uh, first note is that this, this statement of Jesus occurs a number of different times. It occurs in Matthew 21, verse 22, John 14, verse 13, actually a few times in uh, John, and then Luke 11, 9 to 12. So this actually shows up in some way in all four Gospels, uh, but they don't all have the same emphasis. So what's the therefore happening? This is actually goes back to uh, verse 12. Jesus, uh, when verse 12, when they came from Bethany, Jesus was hungry. Seeing in the distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to see if he could find anything on it. He found nothing on it. And Mark actually steps out of the narrator mode to give you a little information. It was not the season for figs. And Jesus says, may no one eat fruit from you again. The disciples heard this. Then Jesus goes into the temple, you have the money changers, he turns over, and then you go back the next day to this fig tree. Um, this is a unique theological word for you called an intercalation. You have a story with a teeny story in the middle, and the teeny story in the middle tells you what's going to happen in the bigger story. So this is the fig tree story, and you got the, the money changers in the middle, he gets really mad at them. My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. No, you've made it a den of robbers. Okay, so nothing's going to go well for this fig tree. That's the foreshadowing. So the next morning they go by this fig tree and they see that it's withered down to the root. And Peter, remembering that Jesus cursed it, says, Rabbi, look, the fig tree that you curse has withered. Okay, so this is what's happening. Jesus wanted food, goes to the fig tree. It's not season for figs. He's mad anyway. In the Gospel of Mark, Jesus is a very odd character. You see his humanness. And so we have a lot of questions about Jesus in the Gospel of Mark. And so Jesus curses the tree. Peter's like, why would you curse the tree? This is actually like not a reason for cursing the tree. It's not a season for figs. And Jesus says, have faith in God, referring to the fact that he's cursed this tree and it happened. Truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea and doesn't doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will come to pass, it will be done for him. So this is a bold prayer and conviction and believing what you're praying for, Jesus says our verse, therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. But now this is interesting. If you were to go to verse 25, 
And whenever you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone, so that your Father also who is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. How come when we go to God in prayer, we don't get everything if we believe that we're going to receive it? Jesus gives us a clue that sin and a lack of forgiveness stands in the way. Do we believe if we were to say to Animus City Mountain, be rolled over into the Animus, that it's going to happen? Probably not. But it, why? Well, why would you want that to happen, for one? But is our will aligned with God's? Well, if there is sin that needs to be forgiven, sin against us that we need to forgive, that's standing in the way. And so Jesus beckons the disciples to go on believing, continue to believe. This is what is standing in the way of, of their faith. It's what was standing in the way of the money changers' faith and those religious leaders in the temple. You don't need a temple to pray anymore is also what Jesus is leading to. You only could pray in the temple is what they thought. But now Jesus says, no. Come and pray to the Father. Forgive sins against you because this stands in the way of you being forgiven by the Father. And it's not that the forgiveness of God is conditional. It's just a matter of fact. If, if you're unwilling to forgive, do you actually trust? Do you actually believe that what Jesus brings is from God? So this is, this is a greatly meditative question for us. What, what stands in the way of our belief? Is it sins against us? Is it our memory of our own sin? Hmm. May we give those things to God in prayer, knowing he'll take them, and that we're then forgiven as well. This is our life of faith. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we know that many things stand in the way of us truly believing in you. And that we need the Holy Spirit to open our hearts to truly believe in the gifts that you give. Help us to have a heart of forgiveness, Lord. That we're not holding on to the past, but that we're giving away of this wonderful gift forgiveness that you have graciously given to us. And that we would in turn share this wonderful news in faith with all those around us. We pray this in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. There's a lot for you to meditate on in this text. Go back to Mark 11, verse 12. Read through this whole thing. See how it flows. Consider why Jesus would curse this fig tree. But then also consider your faith and continue to believe in what Jesus is bringing. Have a blessed day in the Lord. I'm looking forward to seeing you again soon in more time with God in this interactive way. Have a blessed day in the Lord.